A lot of people think of it as a flyover state, you know, flat plains, but we've got everything from running streams in the northeast to sand hills to massive rock formations and bluffs out in the panhandle. So we've got towns of 100 people and we've got Omaha and surrounding area, which is encroaching on a million. It's a wonderful state. They're known for farming community, rural, good football, Midwestern values, friendliness, charm, and all of that. As a matter of American government, they really distinguish themselves with their unicameral legislature. Nebraska's system is unique. It may not work everywhere, but it works well for Nebraska. The one house structure, the small size, the nonpartisanship make it much more responsive to the people and accessible to the people who want to get involved. And I think that it's been a successful experiment. Nebraska is the only state in the union that has a one house nonpartisan legislature. A lot of people think this is just a strange almost goofy Nebraska idea. Like, what is it about the Cornhusker state that leads to this weird legislature? Well, this goes back to the Progressive Era. So the Progressive Era was when the government, which had been pretty much just, let's keep our foreign enemies at bay and keep one citizen from killing the other, all of a sudden said, oh, maybe there's more we can do. And so progressivism influenced this notion of considering redoing the institutions of the legislature and making it one house, making it nonpartisan, so that we're gonna fix some of these things that are not getting done and let the people be more involved. George Norris was a progressive senator from Nebraska. His vision was to have a nonpartisan unicameral in which you are responsive to your constituents directly. His frustration with bicameralism grew out of his frustration with Congress. He thinks the party system is very corrupting and he's seen it firsthand in D.C. in Congress. I think he wrote an article in the New York Times in the early 20s, maybe 1923 or so, where he first proposed this idea and said, not only is bicameralism bad, but partisanship's bad. What he wanted was for it to be very open, very accessible to people. And he thought, you know, if it's smaller, fewer members to keep track of, and it is one house, not two, you can sit here and watch the laws being made. Anybody can. You don't have to worry about what's going on in that other chamber at the same time. And he thought, no parties. You don't want that hierarchy. And really wanted it to be equal input from every senator. And he thought it would be more efficient that way, too. You wouldn't have one house passing the buck to the other. You wouldn't have the conference committees. And so government would be able to respond more quickly and effectively to the needs of the people. By the early 1900s, most forms of government that the average American knew best were the local governments, and they did not have bicameralism. City councils are almost uniformly unicameral. It's one body, no checks and balances cheaper, more efficient. And I think by the time Nebraska puts on the ballot this idea of having a unicameral legislature, all of those ideas look positive. It's during the Depression, so it looks perhaps fiscally wise to eliminate one branch of the legislature. You don't have to raise taxes, maybe you can decrease taxes. And then George Norris adds this other element, which was to get rid of partisan elections. So it's not just going to be a unicameral legislature, it's going to be a legislature elected without party label, perhaps avoiding that kind of faction approach to government. Most of the newspapers in the state opposed the idea. And the reasons that they gave were the same reasons that we hear today when people criticize the legislature. That it would eliminate a huge check and balance, you know, if you take out one house. And that it would put too much power in the hands of just this small group. It's very American to say, we'll elect these people, we'll give them limited terms, but even then we're still concerned with the power they can wield over our daily lives. And bicameralism is very much a checks and balances approach to creating a legislature because one house could do something a little silly and the other house could reject it, therefore it doesn't become law. You have to get both houses 
elected differently to decide to do something. Well, Norris was seeing that another way, saying in a big group, you have to have just a few leaders and they have all the power. The newspaper said the governor will have too much power because you'll take away half the legislature. It looked like it was gonna be a real struggle. Norris himself went out and campaigned across the state. This was 1934, there were lots of little radio stations, and he would talk on any station that would have him about this proposal. The story goes that he wore out two sets of tires driving around the state in an attempt to further his idea of the unicameral and to get it in front of people. Spoke at town halls, anybody that would listen, I think he tried to get that message out. Another interesting thing is that on the ballot that year, there were two other initiatives. One of them was to abolish prohibition by ratifying the national amendment. And the other one was to legalize paramutual betting. And so the story is that proponents of those two said to voters, vote yes on everything, because they wanted their horses and their gambling and their drinking, and that the unicameral kind of got swept along. And it's a great story, and there's probably some truth to it, but the unicameral passed with a larger margin than the other two. The individuals of the state voted it in, and we've had the unicameral ever since first session in 1937. To be honest, it's really hard to change something like this. I mean, what we did in 1934 was amazing. It was probably the biggest change in, in the history of American government, you know, that go from one system to another. I consider it a really great experiment. We're almost at the century mark. I think they're pretty proud of it, and I don't think it's just an idiosyncrasy like being called the Cornhusker State or the unicameral state. I think they are proud of it and think it works. We have independent senators who are able to vote their conscience and their philosophy and do what they think is right. We don't have parties standing between the people and their legislators. We have a pretty responsive state government, and I think that has served the people well. If you've got a problem as a constituent, you have a single representative in which you go to, and that individual has the ability to introduce legislation on your behalf. We are really giving credence to the idea that there is a laboratory of the states. We're trying something here, and uh, we've been trying it quite successfully for quite a while. We offer an example to the rest of the country about an alternative way of doing things.